This is the legendary W124, the E-Class Mercedes-Benz. This one is the E220, a four-cylinder petrol car. Benz lovers call this uh, a tank, probably because it's built like one. And they say that uh, they don't make cars like this anymore. In 1996, incidentally, this car rolled out of a factory which is about 2-3 kilometers from where we are standing today. Uh, this is the industrial town of uh, Pimpri, which is in the outskirts of uh, Pune Metro. Well, uh, but we are not here today to talk about a Mercedes-Benz and the tank. We are here today to talk about another legendary brand, a legendary lighting brand. And I got that right inside the car. Well, I'm talking about, uh, well, just hold on, let me take it out. I'm talking about the Profoto A1. Profoto is a legendary brand uh, from uh, Sweden, established towards the end of uh, the 60s and soon became one among the top uh, lighting brands uh, in the world, predominantly catering to studio photography for commercial advertising photographers. Well, it uh, requires no introduction because it's from Profoto. And if you know how typically TTL flash functions, you know how to operate this too. So I am not going to be spending too much time trying to explain the features of this flash. Uh, I'm going to roll the features. This is perfectly aimed at uh, people who are on, you know, on the run and gun kind of business. Wedding photographer to be precise. Uh, uh, and that's what we're going to do today. We have uh, set up a post wedding shoot for you. Well, I'm going to be waiting here. Our bride and bridegroom is going to be here any moment. And uh, of course, then we will get into the shoot. Well, uh, I'm still waiting for the models, that is our bride and the bridegroom to show up. Uh, well, you can't really blame them, it's just the second day of their uh, marriage. But, you know, he will not wait for anyone. He'll keep changing his position. Now, the light is really hard. I don't think any photographer will want to shoot in this kind of a light. <laughs> you know, they say marriages are made in heaven, but the photographer really goes through hell during that whole, you know, series of events. Anyway, I have some uh, thoughts happening in my head. Let's see what we can do. Ah, they've, they've, they're coming. Okay, let me go bring them and we'll start the show. Now, my objective is to bring the sunlight down. One side is taken care of by the sun and the second side will be by the second flash that I'm going to introduce now. Okay? Ready? Okay, and... Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I, I'll show you uh, so that you know you know what we... That, that, that's amazing. Bride and bridegroom is inside the car, so I'm going to cut the light from outside using this black cloth. What I'm trying to do is uh, also use that spray gun that I showed you earlier. Ready? Very nice. We're going to move to the next location. Now they are in this bar counter, very well dressed, you're looking stylish. And I'm going to use two flashes. Okay, one to fill from the front and uh, one is to create, you know, like a rim light. 
Okay, that's how I'm trying to do this shot. And I'm going to light just his face and I have another A1 in the back creating a nice rim light. Let's see what happens. Okay, now what we are trying to do here is to record some fast action. A splash for example, okay. I have two lights at the rear which is going to highlight the water when it hits his body and splashes. One, two, three. Wow, that's my shot. Brilliant. Welcome back to the studio. We are excited to show you the results of the shoot and we'll quickly go through it. But before that, let me admit everything that we said about that husband wife uh, story. It's not really true. I just want to add some drama to the whole sequence. They are professional models and they are coordinated by Pune models. So we are extremely thankful to Pune models, the only source of or the finest source of models in Pune and around in Instagram. So remember that first situation where uh, by the time the models arrived, the sun had really gone up and became too bright. So we decided that uh, we will underexpose the uh, image uh, and light it entirely by the flash. Ready? Uh, Priya, can you come out please? And uh, give me a, yeah, you can actually look into the camera. Okay, nice. So now I have managed to drop the sunlight down. I'm going to bring the lights in now. Aditya, bring the lights in. And uh, I'm going to work in TTL mode so that the flash knows the aperture and the shutter speed that I'm working with. And uh, I'm going to make all the compensations from here. So bring the A light. Increase the height and bring it like a butterfly light for them. That's in my frame. Flash is in my frame. After every flash, slightly change your positions. The very first shot itself, the exposure was so clean and it filled the shadows perfectly well and the white balance was so clean that, you know, it blended perfectly well with the bright noon sun. So, what I would like to kind of point out is the accuracy of the flash in this situation. It read through the TTL perfectly well. It's not magic. I mean, these days almost all flashes do it, but there were no variation in the output. We were shooting in manual mode, 2.8 and 1 3,000th of a second, and the flash, uh, you know, worked like a dream. After a couple of shots, uh, we brought in the second flash. No, that's inside my frame. Bring it uh, in such a way that you get a nice uh, rim light. And keep it on manual and full. Ready. You can... Yeah, that's perfect. Already? Okay. Nice. Uh, keep your head slightly up and, and push the... Huh, huh. Keep it like that. Ready. Oh, that's it. Okay, and... So this nice clean outline that you see is from the second uh, Profoto A1. So see how clean the flash output is. Uh, well, now whatever that you're seeing is the raw. We will be doing a corrections, a global corrections on these images and then we'll send it through around a Photoshop and we'll bring these images to you towards the end of the video. So the next one is a girl inside the car on the back seat. And what you see here at the rear is the second flash. It's kind of flaring in through, giving a nice uh, highlight here, if you notice. Uh, that's the second flash there. And uh, we like even this one too. Very nice. What is interesting here is the way the flash filled in and gave that accurate skin color. Uh, amazing. Okay. So we are into the third situation now. Very nice. Ha <laughs> ha, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the way the second flash is creating that nice, beautiful rim light. Can you see it? See that? Then we moved again to the next shot. There are a couple of things that I would like the photographer to carry in his kit or her kit always. 
One is definitely a reflector, uh, which can come in handy. This or a poly board uh, is fine. Uh, then a, a black cloth, a reasonably big enough black cloth, uh, using which you can actually cover the car, you know, and cut the sun coming in. And a water spray. Now this can also be used for cleaning the car, also to create some magic, which I'll just show it to you. Okay, so let's get into the shoot fest. Now, our bride and bridegroom is inside the car, bad light inside. So I'm going to cut uh, the light from outside using this black cloth. Use our flash to, you know, create the kind of light that is required to get a nice, interesting shot. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this. Okay. So this is inside the car, the man and the woman inside. Again, shallow depth of field. F28 and uh, 1 800 of a second. Uh, what you see from this side is uh, the key light and uh, there is a second flash working here. You will see it working in the next frames. This is obviously shot during mid sun. Now, if I go to my color and just change the way the color is, see what happens to the image. Something that we shot during 12 in the afternoon is suddenly looking like an image from night. Uh, you can work further on it and you know really embellish this image and really make it look very interesting. Okay, now we then ended up with a shot like this. This is the one which I really liked. Look at this, this light here. This is our second flash creating you know a flare because it was firing straight into my lens. At 1 6th and using a 24 mm lens, very interesting. Look at this light flaring into my lens. The B pillar, which is in front and out of focus, is creating that depth in the image. Okay, then we move to the girl in the driving seat. Okay, so now I've made a small change. Um, I'm using one A1 on the camera itself uh, on TTL mode here, and that's on full power manual. Okay, see what happens. Nice. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Nice. So, this is the shot that uh, we got. Uh, well, while when we say this, I'm not saying these are the best pictures, but given that situation, this is the best we could get out of that. So, you will know from this itself that how accurate the flash was in doing what it was asked to do. Okay, now this is the uh, creative shot. What I'm trying to do is uh, also use that spray gun that I showed you earlier. Okay, bring the cloth over on that side. Okay, now what you do is spray uh, water on that glass. Spray, 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 spray. Yeah, okay. Look into the camera. Yeah, look there. Flash. Ready? Yeah for whatever it is worth. I thought it was interesting. You guys can do this. You know, if you end up in a situation where the girl is leaving home, the sun is gone, you don't have real light to work with, maybe, you know, situations like this can add a little bit of drama. Now to the indoor situation at that restaurant called Boteco. This is how that frame would look if I had exposed it uh, using an in-camera meter. But we try to underexpose it so that the ambient light kind of comes through properly and we kind of frozen this exposure. And then we brought in the model. So what we are trying to do here is we have our models, well, the bride and the bridegroom. And I'm going to use two flashes, okay, one to fill from the front and uh, one is to create a kind of a, a rim light and also take in the ambient light. Okay, that's how I'm trying to do this shot. And this video is being shot with the continuous lamp, the modeling lamp uh, from one of the A ones which is pointed at me from there. Okay, so let's get into the shoot. Just bend your head towards me. Ready, the second flash is there. This is shot at uh, 2.8 again. 
1 by 50th of a second. So this time we're working just on TTL. No edges is required because it's 1 by 50th of a second. And uh, I saw it 500 and we were using a 50 mm lens. And uh, nice, sharp expressions, posture, everything nice. And then we thought we will try and add a little bit of an element in the front to create that sense of depth because if you look at this area, it's a little empty here. So we brought in, you saw what we did. Okay. Now this one uh, is the next shot and a little tricky situation. So what I'm going to do here is we found this wonderful wine cellar and uh, Akhil is going to be inside. He's got this wine glass in his hand. I'm going to be using a grid. Okay. So this is the 10 degree grid, uh, which is, which snaps on in front of the A1. And I'm going to light just his face and I have another A1 in the back creating a nice rim light. Let's see what happens. Okay. So aim at his face. Okay. Perfectly. And uh, let's take the shot. Oh, nice. So there you are. I think I'm happy with this again. So of course we need to work a little, you know, to get the right uh, values in the final image. Uh, we will work with it because it's still eminently correctable. I would like to uh, actually open up the shadows a bit and, uh, you know, control the highlights a bit to get that right balance. Now to that interesting shot that we were, uh, we personally, we were very anxious about. What we are trying to do here is to record some fast action, a splash for example. It's a bright daylight as you can see and we have our model. <laughs> Madhav is a bodybuilding trainer and also a choreographer. Now here I'm trying to play with white balance also here. I want the water splash to turn blue, but I don't have gels now. I have just bare flash. Bare flash is 5,500 Kelvin equivalent to daylight, but I've dialed in uh, a wrong white balance in the camera. Um, I've dialed in about 3,000 as my uh, white balance, which will turn those white lights to blue. Okay. Now I got a yellow color correction filter on the front light, which means the front light will give the right uh, uh, body color because you know they are working against each other one two three uh, so this is at one by one thousandth of a second at 28 and 64 iso and this is the shot that we got and we were ready to go well a baby pool two watermarks timing a little bit of ingenuity is all you need to create a shot like this. So we started working on the splash. Well, you can't time it, especially when you're working with a DSLR, you can't be looking through the viewfinder to time the splash. So you need to look at the model, lock the focus in and wait for the timing. You need to see it and shoot. In the modern uh, mirrorless cameras, actually there is no blinding of the viewfinder. So you can be looking through the viewfinder too, if you're using a mirrorless. Uh, so in a DSLR, we worked uh, differently. And the first shot itself was very interesting. One, two, three. Nice, this would be nice. Wow, that's my shot. Uh, now we are now at one by four thousand of a second. Let us go close and see the splash. Our model is crisp and clear. The shadow almost all, you know, sharp. But if you notice here, you can actually see a blur. So we thought we will increase the shutter speed to one by eight thousandth of a second. And uh, this is what we got. You will see a reduced amount of uh, blur. And of course, at actual size, you will not even know that there was a small blur. So this was created during absolute uh, bright daylight using three A1s and uh, this is what we could create in absolute daylight. So uh, yeah, I mean, this is another favorite of mine. I think I like this picture. Uh, these two pictures are my favorite. These two are my favorite pictures.
So, before we actually look at who is this flash uh, aimed at or targeted at, let me tell you a couple of things about this flash. Now, it's made very well. I've used uh, Pro Photos in the past. They are made from one of the finest factories in the world. Uh, they are Swedish and uh, they are very easy. I mean, you, you take the flash in your hand and you'll immediately know that, you know, you are holding something which is made with a lot of care. And uh, the quality is apparent in plastic and the rubber parts and every joints. Everything about the flash uh, oozes quality, one. Second, it's extremely easy to set up because the menus are idiot proof. You don't need to go through, you know, manuals and trials and uh, all that before you actually start getting good pictures. Take it out of the box, put it on, select the mode that you want, start shooting and from the first shot itself, you start getting good, very well exposed images. And the LCD is extremely bright and eminently readable even in bright daylight. The next thing uh, and the most important thing about uh, this flash according to me is the consistency. Consistency of white balance and consistency of output power. It did not change at all in, you know, consecutive exposures. Uh, so these are to me the real high points of this particular flash. Well, when I say this, I need to also talk about a couple of uh, points that is definitely, it's not a secret, it is working against the flash. But uh, however, the maximum power of this flash is only 76 watts, which can be a little less for many photographers who would like to work with a lot of power. Uh, the second one I thought was uh, uh, the, the manual zoom ring. If you decide to work with a manual zoom ring instead of working with the digital uh, control inside or the auto control inside, uh, there are no demarcation as to whether you are in wide range or tele range or how wide or how tele you are because there is no demarcation. And once you fit in all these uh, accessories on top of this, the access to that ring becomes even less and less. So this is maybe a minor one, but I thought I'll mention that. And the third and the most important one is the price. At about thousand dollars, about 70 or thousand Indian rupees plus, this is a pretty expensive flash. So, but that price is something that you pay for the accuracy, the quality. With the kind of technology and manufacturing facilities available these days, Producing and delivering a product with 90% accuracy and making it available at a great price is relatively an easy job. But from that 90% onwards, every percentage increase in quality and accuracy will start costing exponentially. It's not just that small percentage difference in cost. Which means the reason why products like this cost a hell of a lot of money is because they strive on improving those small fractions and trying on the way to trying to reach that 100% mark. And they are still striving on a day-to-day -day basis trying to reach and give you a product of a very great quality. And probably that's a price that you're paying for. So if you're a photographer who has worked your way up, gained all that experience and of course money, and you want to set yourself apart from the rest, maybe this is a product for such photographers. I'm not saying that you will not take pictures without it, but this also tell you that you have arrived. Bye for now. Photo is uh, currently running a limited period offer for their A1 range of uh, flashes. If you buy a new flash, you will get one battery absolutely free. It's currently running in India for a limited period of time. For the rest of the viewers from other parts of the globe, please check with your local dealers for the offer.